practice or
and after that we go to the cemetery. All right? So God bless you. Yeah, but that's it. Okay. We do it in an orderly manner. All right. No, no, don't worry with me, don't worry with me. Oh, okay, well, it's up to you. No problem at all. Okay, so we have Condolence book at the side, you can well, sign your name there, let the father know that you are here. Alright, and of course, that would be the book to be remembered forever. God bless you, God bless you all. Giving you a few minutes again before we start the service with a prayer, with a song, with a time of worship. So we have about four or five minutes again for the viewing of the body of the late Lynette Ragville. Two minutes again before we begin. Feel free to come forward and view the body at this time. Again, I would like to welcome ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. We may have some ministers of the gospel of Jesus Christ to members of the clergy and friends and family, relatives. We welcome every one of you this afternoon. We thank you for your presence 
It means much to the bereaved family. God bless you at this time. I'm going to ask our attendant to come. All right. Just one minute again. Thank you. And then we're going to close the lid. After the service, at the end, we are going to... We are going to uh, have it reopened. Praise. Amen. Thank you very much. Let us reverence the presence of the living God this afternoon. He is with us. All praise to God the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ. God is our merciful Father and the source of all comfort. He comforts us in all our troubles so that we can comfort others. When they are troubled, we will be able to give them the same comfort God has given unto us. Amen. At this time, let us all stand for a time of prayer. I'm going to ask Reverend Lauren Kisun to open this homegoing service with a prayer, a prayer of comfort, a prayer of welcoming the Holy Spirit of God to bring that comfort to us and to bless this service as we say farewell until we meet again. Lynette Ragbeer. Thank you, Apostle. Let's bow our hearts in prayer as we reverence the presence of Almighty God. Heavenly Father, we come to you in the name that is above every name, the wonderful, precious, awesome, magnificent, yes, yes. glorious name of Jesus Christ, our risen Lord and Savior and soon coming King. God, you are sovereign. You are omnipotent, omnipresent, and omniscient. We thank you, O oh God, for this homegoing service. We thank you that this service has been prepared long before, oh God, today. We pray, O oh God, for your sweet Holy Spirit. We welcome you in our midst, Holy Spirit, that you would wrap your arms around every person, every man, every woman, every boy, every girl that is standing or seated here. We thank you for your awesome presence, because in your presence is fullness of joy. And although, Lord, it's a homegoing service, truly it's a celebration of a wonderful woman, a virtuous woman, the late Lord Father, Lynette Rambeau. Father, we are here to pay our tribute to her and to say how great is our God. Great is thy faithfulness, O God. It is because of your mercies that we are not consumed. I thank you, O God, for the man of God, Apostle Dr. Philip Samuel Singh, that will break the word of God, that will break the bread of life, and that will feed your people. And those that are here, O God, I pray, O God, for all members of the bereaved the family, the immediate those that are mourning, friends and relatives and neighbors, oh God that have gathered here and we thank you, oh God, that heaven and earth will pass away, but your word it will accomplish, so thank you, oh God, I, as I stand here I declare and I decree and I prophesy a blessing over each and every one of those that are seated here today and I pray God for your Holy Spirit to move mightily among your people let your Holy Spirit flood this place thank you for the anointing that will destroy every yoke and remove every burden so Lord as the worship team Lord we will sing unto the honor and glory of our God that every item on this program will bring honor glory to God so father glory to God in the highest and an earth father, peace among your people. We hear the comforting words of Jesus. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Peace I leave with you. My peace give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. So Father, I just surrender everything to you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. As we look unto Jesus, who is the author and finish of our faith. I speak hope, strength, courage, and peace in this place among your people. In Jesus' name I pray with thanksgiving. And all God's people say, Amen. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Remain standing, please, uh, on your program.
there is a song that is most fitted for the opening of this glorious moment in which we say farewell, Lynette Ragbeer. But we are reminded of this blessed assurance that Jesus is ours and Jesus is hers. We're going to sing that together, blessed assurance at this time, led by Reverend Cheryl Harry Paul, and we will try to work along with her. And everyone else, please, I do not have the full worship team this evening as we had some of them last night and night before, but we are going to do our best, and we will do our best, and you are going to help us too. Amen, everyone? God bless you. Thank you very much.
You may be seated. Thank you very much. You sounded better than angels. Yes, you did. It was beautiful. Thank you. Thank you, worship team. And you know, it says, uh, for sure, for sure. Somebody say, for sure. For sure. We will meet on that shore. <laughs> That's a shore, but you need to be sure before you get there. Amen. All right? The spelling is different. It sounds the same. But God bless every one of you. Every one of you in a very, very special way. I'm going to ask, uh, we're going to have a special song from Reverend Cheryl Harry Paul, but before that song, I'm going to ask Reverend Lauren Kisun to come and to read a passage of scripture from God's holy word, taken from 1 Corinthians chapter number 15, verses 53 to 58. Let us hear the word of God, taken from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 53 to 58. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then it shall be brought to pass the saying that is written. Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Thanks be to God for the reading of his most holy and precious word. To him be all glory, honor, and praise, and all God's children say, Amen. Amen. Oh 
Truly, that's so beautiful. That expresses the, the heart of so many of us this afternoon. We are hungering after the Lord. He's so wonderful and beautiful. Yes. We adore Him. And we love Him. I hope this morning you got up and you remembered to say, Lord Jesus, I love you. If you forgot, you can say it now. God bless you. We are moving on in the order of the program. I want to welcome our viewers on YouTube. I think from Canada and the US. God bless every one of you. May you feel the presence of the living God as we feel him right now in this place. Blessings upon you, wonderful people of God. May the spirit of comfort, the God of all comfort, be with our viewers wherever they are watching right now on YouTube or maybe on Facebook as well. God bless you all in Jesus' name. At this time, we're going to have something very important included in the program. It's the eulogy. And the eulogy would be read by one of the members of the family, actually, I believe. It will be uh, one of the daughters-in-law. Wonderful. A daughter, daughter, forgive me. Forgive me, forgive me. I'm trying to keep everything going in my head. Sorry, I apologize. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Everybody knows Carleen. When you look at her, you know, you, you think you're looking at Lynette. True. So lovely, so beautiful, so charming, so wonderful. We are just looking forward to hear this eulogy from you and your husband. God bless you both as you come. Would you please start? Good day to everyone. You know, when I got up this morning and I went on the streaming link and I saw the comments of the people, you know, I was I was greatly blessed and so thankful to see the comments that people wrote about my mother, you know, and what she meant to them as a teacher, as someone they had known her. So this is, you know, my first time I've been down this road. Um, it's a road I wouldn't want to be, but, uh, but um, this was on my lot. I would like to express my sincerest gratitude to all who took the time to be here to show your last respect to our mother. Some knew her, her as Miss, to some she was a friend, to some a neighbor, to others a preacher, to the grandchildren she was grandma, and to us she was our mom. To everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck up that which is planted that was taken from Ecclesiastes 3, 1 to 2. Leonard Radbury was born on the 13th of March, 1944 to James and Hazun Bisu. At the time of her death, sorry, at the time of her birth, she was given the name Shamiroon. She later changed it to Linnet, which I gathered her uncle used to call her. At home, she was called Golly, which was actually a mispronunciation for girly. But that's a story for another time. Her sister told me she was a quiet person and a very pleasant one. She also had a love for teaching. At a very young age, 
she practiced her teaching skills by speaking to the house posts and household items as her students. She went to Picton Presbyterian School and in those days, she walked to school. After completing school, she practiced teaching as a pupil teacher at the Monkey Town Government School in 1961. This was the beginning of a profession in which she nurtured many, many young minds. She tutored many, many children, some of whom lives in this very village, and provided a source of love and comfort for them. Since she was the first teacher they would encounter on their primary school journey. I remember my mother teaching me in standard one. That was the only time they moved her out of the infant's department. However, this was only for a short time and then she was placed back into first year. She was then upgraded to assistant teacher in 1967 and appointed assistant teacher too at Monkey Town Government School in 1968. In 1972, she attended the Naparima Training College. I remembered my mother in her navy blue and white uniform, also looking forward to Smarties, ones that were in the park. <laughs> Dolly said, that's right, which we got almost every week. This, this one park was shared amongst us. Dad would take us to Irvin Park sometimes whilst he waited on her. This was a treat. By the, grace, by the grace of God, she managed to take care of her home, her children, and study. Daryl was two years at that time. After graduating in 1974 from the training college, she went back to Monkey Town Government School and stayed there on her, until her retirement in 1995. So as you see, mom spent all her teaching career in Monkey Town. I told her, mommy, that is such a blessing. When I was working, I wish I could have stayed close to home. She, sel she seldom shared with us the hardship she endured. Things were difficult for us financially at times. However, through it all, she put her trust in God. One day, Calvin, my dad, came to visit mom's parents. The meeting took place in a room where only the four of them were seated and all the rest of her siblings were sent out of the room. My aunt recalled that she overheard her parents asking my dad if he had anything to say. After some deliberation, he responded that he liked Lignant. That was the beginning of a love that blossomed into marriage, which took place on the 21st of March, 1964. During the 55 years of marriage, they were blessed with three children, Dudley, Daryl, and myself. After her retirement, she occupied herself with the women's group in the village and participated in cooking icing of cake she even taught me fondant icing, sewing, in which she sewed a lot of clothing for her granddaughters and also gave gifts to others, floral arrangements, to name a few. She excelled in them all. God had blessed mommy with good health for most of her life. However, in October of 2023, she was diagnosed with inactive thyroid followed by metastasis of the thyroid in January 2024. This was quite surprising to us all. She continued believing in God that she would return to good health. She didn't talk about leaving. On Saturday, the 23rd of January, sorry, on Saturday, the 23rd of March, she said to me, I think I'm going to die. I replied to her, Mom, 
death is by appointment. And if it is time for you to go, then you will have to say like Paul, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. For her birthday, my husband read Psalm 90. Somehow that Psalm had an impression on her because she would ask me to read Psalm 90 or 91 several times. She even asked Daryl when he come to visit her, you know, to read the Psalm sometimes. Before her passing, she said to me, in three weeks, you will see me walking outside and sweeping. To this I replied, thank you, Jesus. It would have been exactly three weeks from the day she stated this to the Saturday she passed on. I believe that mom has gone to her eternal destination. Our hearts are comforted by knowing this. However, she will be greatly missed by us, by all of us. We are encouraged by the psalmist who said in Psalm 139, O oh Lord, thou hast searched me and known me. Thou knowest my down-sitting and my uprising. Thou understandest my thoughts afar off. Thou compasseth my path and my lying down and art acquainted with all my ways. For there is not a word in my tongue, but lo, O Lord, thou knowest it all together. Thou hast beset me behind and before and laid thy hand upon me. For thou hast possessed my reins, thou hast covered me in my mother's womb. I will praise thee. For I am fearfully and wonderfully mean. Marvelous are thy works, and that my soul know it right well. My substance was not hid from thee when I was made in secret and curiously wrought in the lowest part of the earth. Thine eyes did see my substance, yet being unperfect, and in thy book all my members were written, which in the countenance sorry, which in the continuance were fashioned when as yet there was none of them. How precious also are thy thoughts unto me, O God! How great is the sum of them! If I should count them, they are more in number than the sun. When I awake, I am still with thee. I would like to quote two verses from the poem, Psalm of Life, written by Henry Longfellow. Lives of great men, in this case we would say women or woman, all remind us we can make our lives sublime and departing, leaving behind us footprints on the sands of time. Footprints that perhaps another sailing or life's solemn main, a forlorn and shipwrecked brother, in this case a sister, saying, shall take heart again. God bless you all and thank you very much for coming here and paying respect to my mom. God bless you. Thank you. Absolutely beautiful eulogy. Wow. Wow. What a woman of God the late Lynette Ragbeer was impacted so many lives, positively inspired them. And of course, being a school teacher, wow, she imparted to them. And now I'm sure many of them are in very important positions in our society today because of her training, educating of these little ones that grew up under her wings. And truly she has now gone to be with her reward, but she left a testimony behind. We need to consider the life that she lived, the words that she spoke. We need to remember what she said to you in, in private or maybe in public. I'm sure that every one of you that knew her could say something beautiful about her. So we keep those memories in our hearts. God bless the bereaved family. A great loss to this family. But one day, 
and maybe sooner than you think. Hopefully that you are prepared for that sooner day, that we will all see our loved ones that have been taken to heaven because of the grace of God through Jesus Christ. We will meet them again. We will meet them again once you are prepared to go. So at this time, I'm going to ask, you can have a, what is called here on the program, tributes. Uh, so, are you coming? Okay, Dudley is coming, one of our sons, and he's going to share this time. Hello, good afternoon. I am here to pay tribute to my mom, and not only to my mom, to others as well. First of all, one of the things I remember dearly about my mom is that she always strived to be the best that she could be. Whenever she was cooking, yeah, incidentally, my mom took two Chinese cooking courses during her lifetime, and probably three as well. She always aspired to be her best at the pot. In the oven, she not only did normal cooking, she did baking. She baked <coughs> wedding cakes, she baked many cakes. She always did icing, icing and so on. She did flowers making and she did very well at that. She did ceramic courses. She did ceramic courses. I remember when my dad and her, they used to, we used to go up clocks and Bay to do the ceramic classes. She did, she did, she did dressmaking and was able to do wedding dresses and so on. And she did other things as well, I can't remember, dressmaking and so on. Yes. She did jewelry, she made many different designs and patterns. But whatever my mom set her hand to do, she always did it to her best. And not only did she do things to her best, she encouraged me and my sister and my brother to do likewise. Sometimes when she saw me in my secondary school days time, struggling with a math problem, she would tell me, do try my best, try my best. She told me that math was a challenge to her more than it was to me. I did well in my Maths, I eventually, I am right now an online maths teacher, and she always encouraged us to do our best at whatever we did. She said, whatever you put your hands to do, do it with all your might. That is biblical. That is biblical. So we had divine guidance from my mother as well. And whenever, Whenever we had any difficulty or challenges in growing up our life, she encouraged us, just how you're telling me the problem, tell the Lord the problem, tell God the problem, go to God and pray. That was her watchword. So that is one of my tributes to my mom. I would also like to pay, I would like to pay a tribute to my aunt Petra Chanai who worked for the, us for the last five years. She was a source of comfort to my mom and she, she cleaned the house and she cooked and so on. I enjoyed her cooking many times and so did my mom. Eh? My mom enjoyed her cooking. I like to pay tribute to the many people who encouraged her during the past few months. The many people who paid to encourage her and not only that, I I like to highlight my brother-in-law, who did a lot of painting and all kind of work. He busy, busy. I used to get dizzy, dizzy just watching him how he goes up and down and down because I knew I couldn't do that. I know I couldn't do that. So I like to thank him and thank my sister who was up and about. I'd like to thank Pastor Sam Lansing for accepting the invitation. We have benefited from his wit, his humor, and his strong messages. Not only now, but over the years, we have benefited from, it, from that. And 
We were, he, was, he was always a source of blessing. Eh? That is why my mom requested him to do the service. I'd like to thank you, the audience, who have been with us for these past few days. Many of the faces we know, and we're glad to see you all here again. Thank you very much, and that is my tribute to all of you. Wonderful, wonderful. Wow, such a wonderful uh, time we're having here together this afternoon. Uh, and you know, when you look at the faces, are you coming? Oh, sorry. I thought. Okay, Nisha is going to come now, and she also would like to share from her heart a few words. Good afternoon, everybody. I am one of the daughter-in-laws. And this, this is the second hardest thing I have to do in my life. For the first one, I had mom by my side. <coughs> but today I am all alone. Mom was my rock. Mom was my rock, my, my prayer partner, and my comfort. Please forgive me. She taught me over the years that it is useless to worry and fret. Instead, she always said, come, 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 come. Let us pray about it. It will work out how God wants it to work out. Today, I celebrate her, not as a mother-in-law, but as a mother. She would often tell people, this is Daryl's wife, my next daughter. And that is something I will cherish for the rest of my life. Sometimes Daryl would say, I wonder, who is the child really, you or me? Such was mom's love for each one of us. She knew our problems or concerns before we even tell her. She would say, I don't know all of that already. God tell me that a long time. Come, let us pray. Her love for her family was boundless, and for her grandchildren, even more boundless. Their lives were filled with hugs and kisses and prayers. She would pray for each one of us separately every single morning. She was a true matriarch. When daddy passed, she studied the family's emotional turmoil with her prayers, forgetting her own grief. She continued her church, Vineyard Ministries. And the work of the Lord. She was truly a servant of God. She has done her job here on earth, and now it is time for her to be in his presence. I never thought that this day would come, for mom was always here. When you entered that gate, you say, where is grandma? Mom, where are you? I will miss her so much. I will miss her waiting on me every single morning. I stop before I go to work. When I am late, she would call, where are you? I would miss her. I would miss her calling and saying, stop when you're going from school. Make sure and stop. I made goodies. 
you would carry it home. You wouldn't have to cook. If you're sleeping when you stop the gate, open it on the table. I would miss her prayers. I would miss, miss her touch. But I know, and that is my consolation, that she is indeed in a better place and in a place where she wants to be. Thank you all. Could you put attention please, uh, PBU 5366, 5366. Uh, thank you very much for removing the car or the vehicle. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, relatives and friends, family members, thank you for being a part of this ongoing service. Amelia will now come and share with us. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Um, thank you all for being here. I am the daughter of Dudley, and I am the third granddaughter of this lovely woman. Um, whenever we were here, we would always sing with Grandma. She would sing uh, worship songs and then she would make us laugh singing Sound of Music songs so I'm pretty sure some of you may know this song that I'm about to sing it was in the video that um, was playing on the TV just a while ago so please help me sing this song Sera, Sera, whatever will be, will be. The future's not ours to see. Kesera, Sera, when I was just a little girl, I asked my mother, What will I be? Will I be pretty? Will I? Here's what she said to me. Que sera, sera, whatever will be, will be. The future's not ours to see. Que sera, sera. When I grew up and fell in love, I asked my sweetheart what lies ahead. Will we have rainbows day after day? Here's what my sweetheart said. Que sera, sera, whatever will be, will be. The future's not ours to see. Que sera, sera. Que sera, sera. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing that. I'd just like to add a little to that. What Lynnett said to her children and grandchildren is what her mother taught her, which is my mama as well. Mommy will always say, and sing for us that said so. Mommy, see my sister now shaking her head, yes. And another thing that she took out from her mom was, let us pray. You come to mommy with a situation, she'll say, let's pray. She'll pray about it and then she'll say, you still want to talk about your problem? Huh? Do you still want to talk about your problem? Sometimes you talk, sometimes you don't. But what I want to say, that's my elder sister. I'm her sister Sancho anyway. Sorry for not introducing myself. And what Lynette would say to her children and grandchildren and to, to even all the neighbors that would come by and she would pray with us. And she learned that from her mom, which is my mom. My mother was the village mother. Lynette 
was the village, and maybe more than the village mother, because she was a teacher in the school and everybody that was there, she always had a good word to say. And when, I think it was Carleen talked about her, um, and Dudley, about the cooking and the baking and what, well, I want to say thanks to you, Mom. I learned from you. And I think I did a good job. You were a good teacher, I always tell you. When I do my work, I did the, the floral arranging and the cake decorating. And when I would come and do it, and she would say, she say, you did well, you passed your test. And I would say to her, you did well. If you were not a good teacher, I would have not been in the class I am, I would not have learned as well as you told me. So, Mom, as I want to say again, we surely miss you. But Mommy has is taken back her family up in heaven. When you see Mommy, Papi, Kenny, Danny, and Jean, we all send our love. Would you take it to them for us? We love you all. Thank you so much. Truly, Lynette was an amazing woman. Her son, Darren, would now come, and he would share as well. Good afternoon, everyone. I guess they saved the last for the best for last, right? And, um, don't be afraid, it's only the folder. It isn't as long as you think it would, it's going to be. And then again, it might very well be. Um, I'm the last of three children, uh, most of you all would know that, and uh, I also teach. And um, I've had friends who would tell me, boy, I'm real sorry for you, you know, because you grew up in a house with two teachers. You know, and if you all remember when you did the eulogy for daddy, people told me, but your father was real strict. All right? But, you know, the interesting thing about teaching is that you don't only teach subject matter. I teach economics to a form six class. and. Um, the classes would go, yeah, you teach your content, but then sometimes you always tell something, you talk to the students about something else, and you talk to them about something about life. And once I was going to do that in my last class in Barco Secondary, and I heard somebody say, oh God, our next story again, boy. Don't our lives become a collection of stories? There are two phrases in the Bible that I like according to the time of life, and the more relevant one for today, she has gone the way of the earth. And mom has gone the way of the earth. And what it doesn't tell you is that to go the way of the earth, you have to be born, you have to live, and then you die. Simple, short, supposed to be sweet, far from it. Those four words, those four letters, to live, that live. Mom lived 80 years, 80 plus, about three weeks. And it carries so much weight. Your stories of your life become your memories. I am honored and privileged and blessed to have those memories of mom. Carlene spoke about mom attending the picked on Presbyterian school. What she didn't know was that, and she said, talked about it, was that they would walk. The thing is, Daddy and her and her other children would walk from Monkey Town to go pick on Presbyterian. And when they were coming back in the evening, because Mom was four years younger than Daddy, and also younger than most of the, some of the other children, she would run ahead and hide under the cane in the shade and wait until they come back, and when they, they, catch, they catch up to her, then she'd run ahead again and sit down and rest for a while. Plenty of people don't know that. I'm not sure who else would. The interesting thing though is that she walked to school with daddy back home, so you had to wonder, this thing with school and you know, couples make any link up, right? So to the deans from school, I would like to thank my Faisabad secondary fellow teachers we have to pay attention to this link up thing. What I also remember is that mom was forced to walk back from Picton because daddy and some of the older boys 
would wait on the locomotive. And while it is passing, they would run, jump on, grab onto the carriage, and hitch a ride from Picton to Lalbiari Trace, and then jump off. Mom was too small to do that, so she had to walk. My children have been blessed because mom took care of them, both of them. I would often hear mom talk about she'd have to get up at half one after her afternoon nap to go for Joshua in kindergarten. All right. And even after Joshua started primary school, she'll still wake up at half one in the evening thinking that she had to go for him. She'd tell us that she would, she, at nine o'clock in the morning, she'd put on the TV just to hear Sesame Street, remembering when Joshua and Adriana would be here. Dudley talked about so much things that mom did. She was always cooking, baking, floral arrangements. In fact, what I remembered was that anytime there was a funeral in the village, the one person did come to his mom to make a, a, an arrangement. And the sweet lime tree used to be in front. So we always had to go. We always had two sweet lime trees in front and we always had to go and cut from there. And she'd tell the people, the normal flower at that time was chrysanthemum. She did the ceramic crocheting and Adriana wanted to pick up the crocheting, the sewing, the icing cake. Uh, how much are you all? I never had to beat. Okay, I lost. Where did I go? Okay, we're back. How much of you all ever had to beat egg white to get it ready to mix ice in? All right. I remember, I remember when I had to mix the ice in and the cake for my kids to my wedding and my Right, and right, and, and you see? Right, so mom made the wedding dresses for a lot of her sisters. Right. But it does really take muscle to beat that egg white because you have to hold it up in the fork and make sure it don't fall off. And if it's falling off, you have to keep mixing. Yeah. The good thing is my children learn from her. Adriana liked the cross stitch. Joshua, well, Joshua is my right hand. All right, one thing I learned to do is make a mean fruit cake. All right, and I have some people here who have tasted. Where's Kathy? Kathy could vouch for the fruit cake. All right, and people in school as well. Joshua has taken up and he has followed me as well. We have a spoon, a wooden spoon in the kitchen. And, and what they call in the spoon, the, the wrong part, right? They call that the bowl in the spoon. It's half of what it used to be because mom never believed in using a cake mixer. And I would sit in front of the TV on the floor with the bowl between my leg and I'd be going at it. Just leave the TV on and she'd just come and keep adding everything. The spoon was down to half the size of what it is because of beating cake, mixing cake with that wooden spoon. Joshua and I will bake cake now. He will take, uh, he will start and do everything and I will measure. And sometimes he'll watch me and say, hey, what are you doing, boy? Because mom would be leaving, you had to cream that butter and sugar and we'd go like 15 minutes, 20 minutes. Now I just throw it in, pour on the beta lime, hold it and just keep adding stuff. I don't bother with that because I learned. It still mix anyhow. But you know what I'll miss? I'll miss asking Joshua how much teaspoon of baking powder we had to put to the pound. And then I'll say, well, call mom. Because no, I can't. One of the memories that I have that my brother and sister doesn't have is that on mornings, daddy would carry Dudley and Colleen to school in San Fernando. And I would walk up the road with mom. And with daddy, when I came home from Yui, I'd walk down the hill on Friday evening, and I'd ask him, what do you want me to do? And he'd say, wet the plants. And it was never about wetting the plants. 
It was just a talk. Mom, I was lucky in that when they left, I was lucky in that we'd go and wash the ways. She'd soap, I'd rinse. Or I'd soap and she'd rinse. Because a double basin sink. We'd get ready, we'd, we'd go, we'd organize, get dressed, and start walking. And we'd start walking up the road. And somewhere along the line, a teacher passing would pick us up. Very few times we ever walked straight up to the school. When they took her out on Saturday morning, I walked up the road. It might be the last time I'll walk up that road. But this time it wasn't mom carrying me to school. I carried her to school for the last time. Everyone knows um, Colleen talk about mom taught standard one for a short time. I think it's supposed to be one two. Mom taught first year for 33 years. Now, I was talking to somebody last night, Anne, who lives right across the road. And Anne was telling me, Daryl boy, and she teaches first year. She got horse yesterday from just one day of school. Mom taught for 33 years, and you have to understand something. If you don't have patience to deal with those children, all right? She acquired that patience and that tranquility. How much of you all, you all know my mother. How much of you all ever saw my mother angry or vexed at any time? Nobody could say that. And most people would say never. And I've seen her, that happened once. I came down a Friday evening from UE. Walked in, walked upstairs, walked downstairs, realized something up, and walked straight out, and walked up the road by my friend Kenrick. And I asked him, then I decided to ask him what went on. That was the week that kid's son drowned. Mom was vexed for three weeks. I have never seen that woman angry at all ever in my life, except for that period. And she would keep on saying, they couldn't go and save the boy. I knew stay out because I didn't say anything. I couldn't say anything and I understood what she was saying. And because of that, daddy carried me and made sure I learned to swim. So whenever we go to the beach now, mom would always tell me, remember you are not a fish. And now Nisha took up that because every time I go to fish, she would tell me, remember, you are not a fish. Yeah. Both Dudley and Colleen spoke about this. One of the things that defies mom is that you come with a problem to her. And the next thing she would tell you is, let me pray. Always. Mom was like the modern day King David. She turned to God for everything. That was her. Everything about her was, let us pray. And she loved to sing. And there's a little video she have to sing in the case of her. She did worship in church for countless years. I was lucky. And I'll take that back. I wouldn't say lucky. I was honored. I was privileged. I was blessed. Friday we came and we spent time with mom. The, the nice thing about technology is that the Bible on the phone, you can hit play, and it'll, it'll speak out the entire song, whatever you wanted. So I was playing a whole series of psalms, and the first one you always wanted to hear was Psalm 91. And after that, I would find some of the songs, the hymns she wanted to hear and play it for her. And although she lying down, the hand would come up, and then the hand would go back down, and she'd shake her head like this. And she didn't say anything. And you know, you just have to learn to listen to the Holy Spirit. Because during that day, it was troubling me and telling me, go and talk to her. And Nisha left, and Nisha told me to talk to your mother. And I told her, she doesn't have to worry. We will take care of each other. We will, everybody will be okay. 
And I think honestly she was holding on for that. Because confirmation for that was the next morning when I saw the missed call on my phone. And when I called Dudley, then Dudley told me it seems that mom had passed. As mom would say, memories. There's a song I played when daddy went to took daddy out and the car in the hills to carry up the road. Here's to the ones that we got. Cheers to the wish you were here, but you're not. Cause the drinks bring, up, bring back all the memories of everything we've been through. Toast to the ones here today. Toast to the ones that we lost on the way. Cause the drinks pick up all the memories and the memories bring back, memories bring back one, you. There's a time that I remember when I did not know no pain, when I believed in forever. You live in your house with your parents, you live with your brothers and sisters, and you think it is, in, it is forever. And you don't ever realize that how one day it will come to an end. It's one of the hard, harsh things of this life, which is growing up and growing older, because you watch the people who you grow up with and who you love, and it's part of you. And then they start disappearing. Because you really believe in forever. And you'll believe that it'll last for forever. And everything would stay the same. Now my heart feel like December when somebody say your name. Because I can't reach out to call you. But I know I will one day. To everyone here, friends, family, well wishers, make the memories with those around you and keep them because in time to come, that is all you will have. I thank you very much. God bless you, Darren. Wonderful. We have heard much this afternoon that have really brought some peace in our heart, you know, to hear these beautiful words from the person that we love to so very much. Time is going. For the sake of time, I am told we should just allow one person from the community that just approached me and requested that he would come and pay tribute. So I would give that gentleman about three minutes to come. Where is he? And he will share. He's from the community of, uh, this community of Monkita, I believe. Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Tony. And Dali Sindhu Singh, eh? he said I had mommy to wake up. But she was a lovely lady to me. And she was one of my school teachers. Oh, ma, oh, ma, oh, ma. Your mother's love should never forget all the wrong things we do. Shall we bound to regret? Your mother's love. That's it. Your mother's video should never forget the wrong things we do. Shall we? Bound to regret. Many nights she lose her rest, nurse you from her breast, and many nights she woke up late and put you to rest. Many nights she grieved to see you grow from infancy, and many nights she wanted to know what will you be. So use your conscience and sympathy. God said to worship she and then come to be your mother's love. She'll never forget the wrong things we do, child. We have to regret. 
Never put your mother bad, never make her sad. Make your mother happy and glad, will never wish you bad. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you. Thank you. I won't sing everything. Because I am getting paid. <laughs> you did well. And I think, um, well, you're new to me, I've met you for the first time. But I was told that you are Sundar's Popo, Sundar Popo. Sun, Sun. And everybody knows him then. All right, wonderful. Thank you for your contribution. Thank you for your tribute. And that was beautiful indeed. God bless you. We're going to have a special uh, song by uh, Rebecca. Rebecca uh, Makano, uh, granddaughter. God bless her, she comes to sing this beautiful song. Hi, good afternoon, everybody. This song you all are very familiar with, it's an old hymn that says, you know, it is well with my soul. And, you know, coming down to the last moments of grandma's journey, I know that it was well with her soul. And that is what I'm believing in.
Senior pastor of in, on Roshan Douglas. Come, come, come. On Roshan Douglas Road, Barapo, Miracle Church. We have two Rebecca's. One is a preacher, one is a dancer. You could be the next Rebecca to be a singer at Miracle Church. You sounded heavenly. God bless you. And your parents are very proud of you. And heaven is rejoicing. Amen. I, I love talent like that. I love things like that. Wonderful. We will have another special. All the grandchildren are strongly anointed and blessed of God. We're going to have now Adriana to come and she's going to, she's gifted to play the keyboard. She's going to play. And are you going to sing as, as you play? <laughs> All right. Let me get this laptop Afternoon, everyone. So I had a dream last night. I came to check Grandma. She was oh I came to check Grandma. She was here. She asked how I was. I said, well, I just day. She was she was lying down. So then I asked her how she was doing. She had nothing. She wasn't sick. She wasn't anything. She said she was good. Don't worry about her. So when I, I think that was her telling me she's good now. As much as we didn't think, I didn't think today would ever happen. You always think she was invincible. She was telling me that she's okay you now. The song I'll be playing is What a Friend We Have in Jesus. When, well, I've been playing the keyboard a while now, and well, Grandma and Grandpa will always be there supporting. She always likes to hear me play in church. She always say when you come to play, play a special. So, this was one of the songs I would always play in church for the special when we have our friend. Amen. Amen. 
So this one you give me a hug here. Wow, I'm so proud of you. God bless you. God bless you. You know what? Um, we can we can have your city and it's the organist at our kitchen. I'll be cooking this evening. My mother used to play the, uh, the piano. Yes, she used to play the piano. When I heard her playing this, I, 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 I was reminded of my mother. My mother, who uh, she played at uh, the church of the late brother Wilson Rampasad. Many of you might have, would remember that name. The Jesus Deliverance Center. My mother was Eileen Samlal Singh. And she and her good friend, Janet Passad, they led the choir there and my mother played the organ and the piano. When she was on the keyboard here, I just remembered uh, my mother and I remembered my, I remember my own daughter, Rachel, that she also can play the keyboard. So what a blessing it is here this afternoon. I'm sure that you are really comforted by all that you have been hearing. It is such a blessing and an inspiration. Well, we're going to have one song again, again sung by Cheryl Harry Paul, and then I'm going to share a short word because they placed me on the program to preach a sermon. I will not be long. I just want to share a word from the Holy Bible to you, and then immediately following that, we're going to have the viewing of the body, and then we're going to go to the cemetery. So God bless you. Enjoy this beautiful song that is very meaningful. Uh, and very much of a commission that we, we need to remember. People need the Lord. So as you realize, I'm the pastor, the chairperson, if you want to call me that, and the song operator. All of that in one person. I hope I'm doing a good job. Which one?
Surely people, that's the message. People need, need. They may not want the Lord, but they need the Lord. Amen. And this is why Hebrews chapter 9 and verse number 27 says, because it is appointed. We heard about the appointment here. You are, you are watching an appointment. One day somebody's going to watch your appointment. Every time you look at a casket, a box, remember that your turn is coming. Because the word of God says it is appointed unto men once to die. Not to die, come back alive and die and come back alive again. But once. How once came. Your once is coming. I mean, I must tell you the truth this afternoon. I am not here to lie. I'm here to preach the truth and nothing but the truth. So help me God my Father. Amen. But after, somebody say after. After. After that. After death. Something follows. Judgment. Now that, that word is very scary. You know that. In this world that we live in, you hear the word judgment. Oh boy. If you think about it in a legal manner, you get a letter from a lawyer and you see, you see the word judgment. It scares you. That word judgment is a fearful word. But there is a day of judgment that is coming, ladies and gentlemen. After this, after one is laid in a box or in a casket, after the wake services and the funeral service, after one is buried down in the grave or maybe uh, cremated into ashes, and the ashes are thrown into the sea. After all of that, something is about to happen. It does not end at death. It is something we need to come to realize and understand. Because one day, all of us will be a part of this. After this, the word of God says in the King James Version, the judgment after death. Now what happens after this? You need to be concerned about. Because when our time comes, I'm included. After this, I need to know what is happening with me. Because in this life, you care for yourself. You pretty up yourself, so to speak. You dress yourself. You make sure that you are healthy and strong. You are responsible for yourself and you make sure that you eat well, you sleep well and if you happen to get sick you go to the doctor and then he gives you a prescription and you go pay any amount of money to get something to make you feel better because you are caring for yourself. But after you die, have you prepared for what happens after that? Have you made preparations? And some people live a life and they say, well, you know, when I'm dead, I'm done. When I'm dead, well, whatever happens, you know, in that case, they may say, okay, say that, say that, whatever will be, will be then. But no, it doesn't work there. Are you with me? Do not live a lie. Do not live a deception. Remember what deception did in the Garden of Eden when the devil lied to Eve. And because of that deception, man fell, Adam and Eve fell. And as a result of that, the consequences are what we are dealing with today, sin. Don't let the devil lie to you and say, after death, nothing happens. After death, something is happening right now with this woman that once lived in that house. In that body that she once lived in. We are going to be looking at the body, but we are not seeing the person. That was the house, the shell that God gave to her to live in. And she, she took good care of it. She lived long. She lived to be 80 years. Many people in this age that we live in would hardly ever get to that age of 80. Many are dying at 20 and even younger. You never know when, you never know when, you never know how, when death will come knocking at your door. In fact, it doesn't even knock it through. It barges in. It comes. 
unexpectedly when you least expect uh, it happens. Do you know if you would live to see tomorrow? Do you know what will tomorrow be like? But I can tell you who is in tomorrow. And if you know him today, he can prepare you for tomorrow. Amen. But tomorrow is guaranteed to no one, to none of us. Today, the Bible says, is a day of salvation, the day to make preparation. And she, the late Lynette Rugby, made preparation for this. And after that, she made preparation. You are here this evening to have the opportunity. God loves you so much. He loves you so much that he gave you the strength to enter this place this evening. Only to be reminded that you need to be prepared for this. And after that, let us consider what happens after death briefly to a loved one. I'm sure you loved her so much you want to know what's happening to her right now. We will consider what happens after death of a loved one, both for the departed and the living. Okay, so we are looking at what happens after death for the departed one and for those who remain like all of us, because something happens to us too, not only to the departed one or the deceased, According to the Holy Bible, something happens to the living and something happens to the dead. Firstly, let us briefly look at what happens to the living. Anybody alive here this afternoon? Amen. Let me see. Because if you're not, I'll put you in there. <laughs> no, I'll put you in there. Yeah, so you better make sure you're alive. Somebody pinch the person next to you. Lovingly, pinch them, lovingly, <laughs> lovingly, lovingly, lovingly. Are they, are they alive? Did they say, ouch? Because a dead, in the, a dead body can feel nothing. But once you have a living body, you're living inside that body, once you feel pain or a pinch, you know that person is alive. Something happens to the living after death. We're going to look at that because the Bible says, according to Ecclesiastes chapter number 7 and verse number 2, it says, hear this well, the living, not the dead, the living viewing the dead, the living mourning the dead, the living burying the dead. Ecclesiastes chapter number 7, verse number 2 is addressing the living in a time of a funeral service, in a time of a wake service, the living will lay it to heart. The living will lay it to heart. Ladies and gentlemen, are you laying this to your heart? Or did you just come to pay respects and go home and forget everything? I hope not. That would be ignorance to the highest level. We are here this afternoon because God wants us to lay to heart the reality of something that many people are trying to deny whatever happened to them. Are you ready to die? Are you prepared to die? Nobody likes to talk about it. Last night, the wake service, I asked how many wanted to go to heaven. Let me ask you, how many of you want to go to heaven? Come on, okay, so some of you want to go to hell then? Because I'm not seeing your hands going up like that. Everybody wants to go to heaven, no matter what religion you belong to, they want to go to heaven. Come on, somebody. Yeah. Or you just want to just swing in the middle. How many of you want to go to heaven? Why? Come on, come on, come on. I'm watching you. Anybody don't lift up your hand, you're going to hell. Some of you fanning, you're saying your hand occupied. <laughs> your hand occupied, you can't raise it. All right, God bless you. I will tell you how to get to heaven. How many of you want to go now? You want to go now? You want to go now? Come, come. No, no, stay, stay. There's only room for one here. <laughs> but I'm, I understand what you mean. But I'm glad I still got some hands because normally most people never lift their hand after that because everybody thinks, well, you know, you've got to die to go to heaven. 
But I'm glad those people must know that Jesus can come and take you before having to die. I'm sure most likely you believe that. But I'm not going there right now. But the Bible says the living will lay to heart. You need to consider the seriousness. It's very, very important to understand what will happen to the dead, the, de the person that you love that dies. And so when we come to a funeral service, we will lay to heart, we will consider, we will, we will, we, we will um, uh, take it into our heart and analyze what life is really about. Ecclesiastes chapter 7 verse 2, the entire verse says, uh, It is better to go to the house of mourning than to go to the house of feasting. For that is the end of all men. And the living will lay it to heart. I want you to look at the box at this moment, this casket. And I want to say to us this afternoon, to the living, that death becomes a witness. Death becomes a witness that will testify that the living one day will end up like that. So you can't say that you never knew. You're witnessing it this afternoon that our day is coming. She knew her day was coming, but she was ready for it. But I'll tell you something, when you get into a box like that, the reality is this. You've got to be prepared for what happens after the box. Because inside this box, there are no vents, no oxygen, no pockets, no TV to watch, no food to cook. Inside this box is one person, not many people. When you die, it's you and you alone that will end up in a box. And a preacher like me, hopefully, will come and preach, and preach a sermon like what you're hearing when you're dead. But what happens after death, we will talk about. But the living must learn from the witness which has become a testimony so that we can understand according to Hebrews 9.27 it is an appointment that is being fulfilled. It is met. You can't run away from it. You can't hide from it. You cannot cancel it. You cannot postpone it. You know we love to do that when we make an appointment and we get up late in the morning and you say tell them I'm not feeling well. I can't make the appointment. Not with this appointment. It is appointed unto men once to die. That appointment is coming. Ladies and gentlemen, one day you are going to die. Yet so many are living as if they would never die. Death is like an elephant, and you know how big it is. Death is like an elephant in the room that nobody wants to talk about, as if to ignore it will make it go away. It's ridiculous. The truth is, death is inevitable and death is inescapable. Death is no respect of persons. Death is no respect of age. Death is no respect of religion. Death is a painful intruder and a pernicious reminder of our human condition. There's a time to be born and there's a time to die. Are you ready? Are you prepared? Have you made arrangements? I'm not just talking about writing a will and saying what you want to leave to your loved ones. That is important and that is good. And even when you write your will and you say you're leaving this and that and the other, after you die, all of them start fighting to take what does not belong to them. Real trouble after you die. But don't worry about that, you're not there. Once you're dead. We'll talk about you who are dead after. But whilst we are alive, the witness is speaking to us and reminding us and informing us and testifying to us. One day you are going to be in a box like that. Statistics reveal that one out of every one person will die. We have a, st sticks, a statistics, uh, what, what do you call it? Statistician? What? And she's, who's, whose daughter is that? I think it's Darren's daughter. Well, I suppose you understand 
what I'm saying, statistics are very important to understand. One out of one will die, so you, you're there. We are there. Lynette's death is one of the nearly two people that die each second in the world. Somebody say one. Two people just died. Somebody say two. Two people just died again. 105 people die each minute. These are statistics, Adriana. 6,316 people die every hour. 151,000 people die each day. There are approximately 4,548,000 deaths every month. And those statistics are, are less than the, the real number. Because when there's an earthquake, which happened, uh, by the way, today in Taiwan again, people are dying. When there are wars, people are dying more. These are just natural deaths. When there's a pandemic, never forget 2020. You could have been one of the statistics, but you lived to be here today so that you could be ready for tomorrow. You can be ready for heaven. The Bible describes death as an enemy. Death is a formidable foe. And it truly separates us from our loved ones. We don't like it, but we can't stop it. Death also separates the human soul from its body. Because you are more than a body. And you take so much time fixing your body, but so many people fail to fix their soul. We spend thousands and millions of dollars. Some people go, I know, I know, I know. I didn't do it, but I know. Some people to lose weight, they go to Venezuela and they spend big money to pull out all the fat. Liposuction. People are spending millions of dollars on their body. Trying to look good. I've seen some of these celebrities on television. If you see them without makeup, you run. <laughs> Billionaires. They're getting old. They're getting weak. And they're dying. But they're spending pumping money, pumping money into them. And one day, all that money would have been a waste of time because they're going to end up in this. And they're still going to ask somebody to take some of their money and make them look good. And that's all right. But the point I'm making, ladies and gentlemen, know when to stop spending on yourself and on your body and start spending some time considering the value of your soul. Where will your soul spend eternity? Your body is not you. Your body is not you. Your body is not you. Your body is your house. You're fixing your house and that's okay. But somebody will take your house one day this house somebody will take it and somebody will take that house and bury it somebody will take your house the body and bury it or burn it you need to consider that we are more than flesh and blood we have a soul we have a soul and the bible says the soul that sin it will die and that's our concern here this evening is it well with your soul have you surrendered your soul to the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ? You know why you're taking the water? I'm so glad. Because it's going to get hot here in a while. Real hot. I'm talking about the heat of the Spirit of God. Amen. That will convict you of your sins. Amen. But that's okay. Another reason why you're drinking that water, because you love your body. Think about it with me. That water received right now is helping my sermon. That water is preaching for me. The reason why you are drinking that water is because uh, your body is becoming dehydrated. So you see what I'm saying is the truth? Are you with me? Yes. You are trying to take, and some of them waiting over here before they die. <laughs> Bring some water over here. None of them are getting water here. I don't want a very more than one person this evening. Hold up, shut up, Spirit of the living God, I'll tell you something, the water that you're drinking now is not quenching your soul. 
It's quenching your house, your body. You're washing your body, you're cooling your body, but your soul is not being quenched or satisfied or fulfilled with natural water. What you need is some of this water, the living water, the word of God, that if any man drink of the living water, the word of God and the word that became flesh, the Lord Jesus Christ, Jesus said, I am the living water that comes from heaven and that water is for your soul. Why do we take time to satisfy our flesh, ladies and gentlemen? And we never satisfy the cry, the desperation, and the need of our soul, which is to be quenched with the water from above. Yes, amen. Did you get what I said? Yes. No, you know I'm not being sarcastic and I'm not judging you or condemning you, but I'm trying to reach you, ladies and gentlemen, before it's too late. I know you didn't come to hear all of this, but God wanted us to hear this. Let me wrap up, let me wrap up. I could preach more, but time. No, one more, I think you wrap up. Are you learning, brother? Are you learning? Are you learning? I am. Amen, I'm glad to hear that. God bless you, God bless you. So death will separate the soul, the human soul, from its human body. And that is what has happened to Lynette. Lynette is not in this body. And you know that. Because you love her, and if you love her so much, and you knew that she was in this body, you would go down in the grave with her. Would you go down in the grave with her? Yeah. Nobody would go down in the grave with her. Yeah. Nobody here would go down in the grave with her, because you know that she is not there. But where is she? If she's not there, if she was there, because as your mother, as your grandmother, as a friend that you love, if you know where that person is, you will find that person and help that person. Would you go down in the grave with her? Would you be buried this evening with her in a short while? No, you will not, because deep inside, you know that Lynnet is not there. That's right. Yeah. But where? Somebody tell me, where is Lynnet? Where? Let me preach, one preacher here. One preacher. Hold on. Where is, thank you very much. Where? Where is she? I'll tell you where she's not. She's not roaming about, seeking rest. Because the Bible she believed in, which is the word of God and says, the Bible says, absent immediately from the body is present with the Lord. Where is Lynette? With the Lord. Amen. Who is the Lord? Jesus. Who is the Lord? Jesus. If you know him, love him. If you know him, serve him. If you know him, honor him. If you know him, make him your savior. So while it is death separates us from our loved ones and death separates the human soul from its body, I want to bring good news to you this evening. The good news is our God, the God of this Bible has conquered death. Death has been conquered by the God who became flesh. No other religion, no other fear, no other philosophy, no other concept of any kind provides the answer for the salvation of our souls and for the deliverance and the power from death. But the God that we serve that became flesh in the person of Jesus Christ of Nazareth he came as one of us and he died for all of us and he was buried in a tomb but ladies and gentlemen i get excited to tell you on the third day something happened something that brought defeat to death the lord jesus christ triumphantly rose from the dead he rose, and because he lives, she can live again. Amen. And you can live again when your day to die comes. When your soul leaves your body, that body can be resurrected again. Last night I spoke about Jesus himself saying, I am the resurrection and I am the life. And he that believeth in me, though he be dead, yet shall he live again. My God, somebody, do you believe? Do you believe in this Jesus? With all of your heart. Will you show it to your neighbors and friends and your family that you're a believer in the resurrected one? Yes, something happens to the living after the death of a loved one. And that something was just described in a few words that we had to learn. But secondly, something happens to the dead after death. That's what we're looking at very shortly now. To the dead 
to the dead. Death is a doorway into eternity. Death is a doorway into eternity. And we are all going to pass through that doorway sometime. And when we cross over, because we are living right now in this part of eternity, but we are living in a temporal world and a temporal life. This is not eternity. This is temporal. This is why you are, you are, born, you are born and you will die. There, there are seasons in this world that we live in, but eternity is different. And when you cross over, when you go through the doorway, you step into eternity and the soul that you have and that you are that were made by God. Remember God said, let us make man in our own image and likeness. And the Bible says, and God made man in his own image and likeness. And when God breathed into the nostrils of the body that we live in right now, man then became a living soul. We are a spirit being, we live in a body and we have a soul. And when we die, our spirit and soul leaves the body and steps through the doorway into eternity because it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this, the judgment. The Bible says, every one of us shall give an account of himself to God after death. Are you prepared to give a, an account to God for the life that you lived here? Because I'll tell you something, it's not only the works that you do, but the thoughts that you think. Because God is gonna judge the whole person that you are. Yes, sometimes uh, you tell somebody you love them, but you really hate them. And God will not judge the word love. He will judge your thoughts and know that you lie. He will judge your thoughts, your mind, your, your intentions, your motives. He will judge you. And he will judge your actions as well. Are you prepared for that? That will be the judgment that we will stand before God and give an account. I want to ask you this evening, have you forgiven your enemies? Or do you still harbor some of them in your heart? I know some very nice people, quote and unquote, but when you ask them about their ex-husband, they say, that dog, that devil. And then they're in church saying, hallelujah, praise the Lord, everybody, pray shalom, shalom. I'm not being sarcastic, I'm just demonstrating and dramatizing the truth that we need to love from our hearts uh, because God will judge the heart uh, and the motives of the mind. And if right now this evening you, ha you are harboring bitterness, anger, wrath, unforgiveness, jealousy and strife in your heart, uh, you need to forgive uh, and you need to ask Jesus to cleanse you and make you clean so that when you stand before God in judgment, you will not be condemned. This is why you, when you give your life to Jesus, he changes you, you become a new person, and when you die, you enter his kingdom, and he says, welcome. But some of you, he might say, what are you doing here? But he wants to say, welcome, enter into the joy of the Lord. And that is what was said for the late Lynette. Death opens the door into the courtroom of God. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, families and friends, after death, each one of us will stand before the God of this Bible. Amen. No other God right. of any other book. Yes, I'm that kind of bold preacher and I'm, way, I, I'm willing and, and ready to take a bullet for my face. Make sure I hit straight though. I don't want to suffer. Hit me in the head and let me drop dead one time. But I'm telling you that Jesus Christ is the truth. God who came in the flesh. And we will stand before him. Jesus came to tell us that. Have you read your Bible recently? If you do, you'll discover what I'm saying is the truth. In the book of Revelation, says, the last book of the Bible, it describes what this judgment will be like. 
Verse number 12 says, number 11 says, And I saw a great white throne. Chapter number 20. A great white throne. No. That's a scary thought. Visualize what I'm saying. It's great. It's white. It's holy. It's pure. It's righteous. It's God. It's great. But him that sat on it, from whom, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. Everything started to move, pull back, because of what was about or what is about to follow this great judgment day. Verse number 12 says, And I saw the dead. He saw the dead. The Bible says, Small and great. Stand before God. Many of you know some great people, important people, wealthy people, influential people, but as great as they were, you might have attended their funeral service. You would have heard that they died because all the wealth and power and fame that they had, they could not delay or deny when death came to take them. The appointment had to be met and they were dead and they are still dead. They were great whilst they lived upon the earth, but now they are standing before God in judgment to give an account. Where are all the great men that lived in the past that you study at university and you study about them? Like Augustus Caesar, where is he? Do you know Augustus Caesar was in history? Uh, some of you will know this far better than me because many teachers are here. But he was worshipped as a God. He claimed to be God. Where is that little G? God now. Dead. Could he, could he have raised himself from the dead if he was God? Where is Augustus Caesar now? Where is Alexander the Great now, that great conqueror? Where all the armies led by great generals, where are they today? Napoleon, where is he today? Many people still in a sense worship these great people, but they are dead. Are you with me somebody? Yes. Do you know somebody that is great that died? Where all the leaders of all the empires that came and went, they are nowhere to be found anymore. They are all dead, they are buried. You may see their tombs, but they are not there. But if you go to the tomb in Israel, in Jerusalem, and you see a tomb with a stone rolled away, you would notice a sign above the opened, the rolled away stone over the tomb that says, He is not here. He is risen. The Lord Jesus Christ rose from the dead. Because he's the greatest of the great. He conquered death while all the, other, all the others have died. And so we read in the scripture here, small and great stood before God and the books were opened. There are going to be books were opened and another book was opened. And which is the book of life. That's the most important book. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it. And death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged every man according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. Last verse. And whosoever was not found, was not found, written. I want to close with this. I want to close with this. I want to ask you a question. I like to be, I'm a pointing preacher. When I pointed you, I'm blessing you. But the focus, my focus is on you because I love you. Don't get scared. Is your name written? 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 Don't start the person next to you right now. Make sure your name is written. Is your name written? in the Lamb's Book of Life, in the Book of Life. How do you get your name written? Well, if you were to ask the late Lynette, she would have told you how to get your name written in the Book of Life, not the Book of Death. Because if your name is not written in the Book of Life, then the lake of fire is waiting for you. Your name is written in the Book of Death. 
But if it's written in the book of life, Jesus Christ said, I am come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Holy Spirit, I pray. Holy Spirit of the living God, I pray. Somebody join me, I pray in the name of Jesus that somebody here this afternoon will experience your love and will accept that love. They will accept you, the living God, the God who came to save us, the one who conquered death for us, the, the God who reigns and rules, who sits on the throne, the judge of all the earth. I pray, Holy Spirit of God, the living God, that you would convince everyone of this truth. Lynette believed, and she's no longer here, but she's with you. But when our time comes, we want to know our name is written in the book of life. If there's anyone here this evening that you need your name written in the book of life, it can happen now. It can happen this very moment. I'm going to pray a prayer that can get your name in the book of life. Yes, some of us, we want our names in, in books that, you know, that we feel very important to have it there. But the most important book is the one that is of eternal life. Once your name is there, you have a name, you have a name. John Doe, Philip Samlal Singh, Suzanne Samlal Singh, L Lauren Kisun, Cheryl Harry Paul, Daryl Ragby, when every, every one of us have a name. God knows you by name. Your name is very important. It's already in the, on a birth certificate. One day it will be on a death certificate. But the question is, is it in the book of life? With your heads bowed as we close this service, if you want your name written in the book of life this afternoon, if you want your name there, I want to see your hand lifted up to say, I want my name there. Anyone? God bless you, sir. Anyone else? God bless you, sir. Anyone else? You want your name in the book of life? You want your name there? So when you stand before God's judgment and the books are opened and that book is opened, you will not be afraid. You will be confident because you know that today or sometime in the past, not in the future, but now or yesterday, you have given your life to Jesus Christ to guarantee you that your name is written in the book of life. Anyone else? Somebody on this side. Anybody else? Because nobody else is going with you and nobody else will be a lawyer there for you. Nobody will be there to defend you. you mother, your father, your brother, your sister, your pastor, nobody, your priest, your pundit, nobody will be there except one person. If you have him now, he will be there with you. If you have Jesus with you now, you will have him with you then and there. Anyone else want your name in the book of life? Lift your hand. I'll pray with you. A prayer will make the change. Anyone else? Okay, let us pray together. I pray that you didn't lose this opportunity and miss this, if you want to put it, chance, because this might be the only chance for some of you this evening. You may never see it tomorrow, but today is the only time that you know. I want to ask you to pray this prayer, everyone, together with me. Say, Lord Jesus Christ, I believe with all of my heart what I have heard from the Bible today. I believe the Bible is the Word of God. And I believe that Jesus Christ is the son of the living God and I believe that Jesus Christ came into this world to die for my sins his blood was shed for me he died for me but on the third day he rose from the dead and he's no longer dead he is my conqueror and he's my king and I want Jesus Christ to come into my life Come into my heart, Jesus. Come in now. I open the door of my life and I invite you to be my savior. Forgive me of my sins. Cleanse me. Wash me. Change me. Make me a child of God and write my name in your book of life. So when my turn comes to die, I would never be afraid I will be ready because you live. Thank you, Jesus, that you live in my life. 
from this moment. I am a child of God, a follower, a believer of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Would you please stand? Spirit of the living God, thank you. Thank you for the comfort that you have given to all of us, but above all, thank you that you have given us the way of salvation, which the late Leonard, who lived in this body, had accepted and she followed. Those of you watching online, I pray. I pray for you. I pray that you, I hope that you prayed that prayer, but if you did not, you can still do it now. Some of you didn't do it now, but you may do it tonight. But do it before your heart stops beating. Please, do it before your last breath. I beg of you. Because if you do not make it to heaven, there's only one place after. There are no different places but one other place and nobody wants to go there because right now it's very hot as it is and there is no air condition down there and there is no fire escape down there and there is no time down there it's eternity and that's why God so loved you that's why he loved you that he gave his one and only son if you believe in him you will never perish Say after me, I will never perish, will never perish but, have but have everlasting life. In the name of God the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, members of the bereaved family. We're going to have the last viewing here. I don't know if you'd like to open it at the graveside as well, but right now we can have a viewing of the body, the house that Lynnet once lived in. And when we go across there, we will just have a prayer, a couple songs, and we will, we will commit the body into the ground and await the resurrection when Jesus comes again. God bless you.
Rebecca and all the wonderful singers we have here to help us, you know, you know, you're, you're worship leader, are you? A soloist? Like this thing, you? Yeah, I ordain you as a worship leader. Alright, well Lauren is here, Reverend Lauren is here. So let, let's sing this first one and the second one you can choose, right? But when we all get to heaven, right? Let's yeah, sing it. We all know it, right? right okay. okay, good afternoon everyone. And um, I am very honored to, to be the assistant pastor with my apostle. Let me again, before we sing those two songs, I taught with um, uh, Asharian Ramsaran, sister of the late Lynnett Rockberry and Picton Presbyterian. So the history is very rich yes, among us. Yes, I give God praise and thanks. And I want to say when I have to pray, I don't want anybody to open. That's the teacher in me. <laughs> I taught for 24, uh, 36, 36 years in teaching, 24 at Grand Memorial. So the students that are here, if there are any students, we know we give, we pay respect um, to the late Lynnett Rockbear and um, my apostle, Apostle Philip Samlansi. So we're going to just sing okay, two songs. Let's with a prayer now, sure. and then sing it two that, songs, sure. and then we'll make the body, all right? Right, so those on the outside, no talking, please. We just reverence the presence of God. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, we give you thanks and praise. Truly, this is the day that the Lord has made. And no matter what, we walk by faith and not by sight. So we declare boldly and we proclaim, this is the day that the Lord has made. Thank and we you, will Jesus. rejoice and we shall be glad in it. You, Lord, even as her brother, Mr. Bisoon came and he said, I hope you're not singing any sad song. And I said, no. We're going to sing when we all get to heaven. Amen. Because yes. to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Yes. And that, that this is where the late Lynette Ragbeer is right now. Yes. She is in the presence of the Almighty God. Hallelujah. King of kings and Lord of lords. Yes. And those who love her, she has left a rich legacy. Yes. That those who truly say with their lips and they mean it with their heart. Yes. That one day when we stand before Almighty God. When we stand before Jesus, he will be our savior, not our judge. Amen. Thank you for the apostle that prayed and, and that, that, that ministered so powerfully under the anointing. And I pray, God, that those that heard would have accepted you. So, Lord, as we prepare to commit the body of the late Reverend Lynette Ragbeer, we do so singing joyful songs, counting our blessings that Lord each person here they have a, each person here has a special memory about her whether it's a son a daughter a grandson a granddaughter a friend relative neighbor each person here has something good to say about your daughter so father we just give you glory honor and praise as I lift my hands I bless the immediate members yes. of the bereaved family touch them sweet Holy Spirit and wrap your arms around them and let them know that you are the God of all comfort yes. for your word says blessed are they that mourn for they shall be comforted they shall indeed be comforted and when it is our time to go we know that heaven is our home we give you thanks and we give you praise in Jesus name I pray with thanksgiving the one and only true and living God and you are coming back again. 
Thank you for your resurrection power that will fall mightily upon everyone here, bringing praise, honor, and glory to you, my Lord and Savior. Amen. Okay, so as Mr. Bisoon requested, and those of you who know the song, we will sing just about two verses. I don't have the sheet in front of me. When we all get to heaven, and my grand school favorite, count your blessings. All right, Mr. Bisoon, so we want to sing. Uh, at age 65, I'm trying to see the words here, but we will go. Sing the wondrous love of Jesus. Sing His mercy and His you have grace. Hands. Clap it. In the mansions, bright and blessed, He'll prepare us a place when we all. song we are going to close the lid get ready for burial please last hearing if you'd like to we are closing the lid now and the casket will be placed over in position ready to go yeah. I will commit the body when the casket is inside there yes, in the top. Yeah. 
Thank you. 
sitting position. Then we have a final electric here for everything and I just forget that one. No, we don't need to be natural. We need to be natural. We need to be natural. We need to be Thank you. 